language, logic, society, self, music, art. Sports. PlayStation Portable. It's supposed to stand for Practical Intelligence Quotient, but where's the I? It's the mid-2000s, Nintendo was still the king of the handheld scene with the Game Boy line dominating over any competition, and they were just about to reinvent it altogether with the introduction of the DS. It didn't seem much was going to change from the norm, until Sony announced they were going to make their PlayStation portable. The PSP was released on March 24th, 2005 to give Nintendo a run for their market dominance, and they did put a dent in there with the system selling decently and having a varied library of titles. From experience, we know that a certain genre does best on handhelds, and that is the puzzle genre. And the PSP wasn't in short supply, but there was one that caught my eye. That being PQ. This game was released on January 10th, 2006 to an above average response from the critical masses. Now, I won't be shocked if you've never heard of this game before. I didn't know about it until I started getting into the PSP, but when I saw the cover, I was kind of excited as it reminded me a little bit of Intelligent Cube. IQ and PQ, together at last. But PQ doesn't share much in common with IQ. It's a different game in its own right. How different? You're about to learn when we take a better look at PQ. Well, this is going to need explaining. Reason why I'm going old school recording the game screen on you is because it's a last resort. I ordered AV cables that took a while to get here, so I delayed the video a week until they arrived, only to find out they don't work on my model PSP. They can switch the display to the monitor, but it won't let me play a game. Great way to find out my PSP is the 2000 model. <laughs> it's an inconvenience, but it'll have to do. I'm a fan of Super Scummery through and through. Anyway, the main game lies under the PQ test where you have to complete all 100 puzzles or questions in the game to get your practical intelligence quotient number by testing your cognitive abilities when solving these puzzles. I like how they make it all sound like it's a science because it makes you feel smart, but when you get far enough, you're going to be thinking the opposite or... Have a headache, whichever comes first. You go through the test by stages. There are 10 stages, and each stage has 10 questions. They don't have a common theme as far as I can see, but the difficulty is just about even. I mean, these first 10 questions were as simple as you could get, even when they varied a good amount. Some of the obstacles you'll encounter first are movable blocks and walls, police, conveyor belts, and even lasers. Some of these things can be grabbed or moved around if you hit the X button, while something like the cops need to be avoided at all costs. It's a good life lesson, especially if you're not white. Actually, let's not go there. The object of every question is to get to the white void that represents the goal. And when you reach that, you'll move on to the next. And when you finish the 10th question, you'll have completed a stage and you'll be shown your results and total score. We'll go over how scoring works in a second as well as what happens when you fail, because I experienced that immediately at the beginning of stage two. 
So you have these stair blocks that you have to move around in order to climb up and get to the goal, but I struggled to figure out how the game wanted me to do that, and I ended up getting into trouble. You have a timer and bonus points counting down during a question, and if they both reach zero, you don't die, but you lose out on points and could get penalized from this point forward. You could get penalties for taking too long to complete a question, moving blocks over the allotted number of moves, cause that's also a thing, so you have to think fast or suffer the consequences of failure. You'll be given additional time to complete a stage if you go over, but I ended up failing it completely. Man, I didn't think I would struggle with something as simple as stairs and I go up and down them every day. Or do I? Yeah, I do. Even if you do fail, you'll just keep going as this is a test after all and the game takes that quite literally. So the pain you felt from not knowing a question from a test you took in 8th grade really comes back to haunt you. There are more things to interact with including colored doors, maps, and other doors for larger questions. The difficulty steps up a tad but it isn't too bad at least when stairs aren't involved when they are. Oh god, I'm not dealing with this again, and it's even worse with the conveyor belt. You have the option to skip a question or even an entire stage if you're feeling that brain dead. You also have the option to retry a question if you find yourself stuck and want to start from square one, but it doesn't reset the time or points, so this may be more of a disadvantage, and you do get penalized for it too, so what is the point? Learn, dipshits. Learn. I like to think of this as the speedrunner's puzzle game, as you have to complete all the questions in the least amount of time and possible moves in order to get the most points, which may get easier or harder as you enter stage 3. Here even more interactive obstacles make their appearance with weighted doors, escalators, and revolving doors. You also have questions that block the passageway and you have to rely on this arrow message to get through. But who follows directions when you have brute force? Oh, wow, how the hell did I do that? I made it to stage 4 before I called it quits, as I showed most of what the game has to offer, and it's only going to get more complicated from here. But from what I played, I thought it was cool. The questions varied a lot and provided a good challenge. While some may have seemed simple, others took more time to figure out, while a few I couldn't figure out at all. I'll just need more practice with the stages themselves, which is something you can do, and I'll show you how in another section. And if you're wondering what question I stopped at, it didn't involve stairs, I just got stuck between a conveyor belt and a wall. We've all been there, right? The music was composed by the following names who I may not be able to pronounce correctly, and though I found the tracks good, I also feel that the tempo is a bit off. For the most part, its intensity is always high like the situation is dire, but most of the questions are simple that I don't think the action matches the tunes you hear. I still think it's okay though, just needed to drop the need for speed as I can't do much other than walk. It'd make better sense if it got faster when you're going to fail it. The simple solution is to... Do the Mario swing your arms from side to side. Have I done this joke before? I think I have. Sorry. Like most puzzle games, there isn't a whole lot left to go over, but we gotta cover the few things it does have, might make us smarter in the long run. You have stage select for you to practice the questions in every stage so you can get better at them, and you also have a tutorial which is what I've been referencing so you don't need to see it, though I did forget to mention that you can use L and R to adjust the camera angle in case you need to get a better view of things from a different perspective. And that's pretty much it. You could see your current score and overall rankings in the world if the servers were still up, 
and I just noticed someone else has been touching my PlayStation Portable. Jacob, what did I tell you about touching my P? Well, where the hell could he be? No information concerning PQ's sales figures were available, but it's safe to say it must have done well considering it got a sequel the next year, which enhanced the experience of the original and added more challenges to spruce things up. And that's all there is left to say about it. I mean, this was the first D3 published game in North America, and developer NowPro has been making games since 1986, but PQ is more like a brief blip in their history. So, what is my rate to play? I don't know what it is with me and puzzle games lately, but it's given me the opportunity to explore other systems and unique ideas, which is how I would describe this game. Unique in look, unique in sound, really a unique puzzle game that I would recommend to any who own a PSP. It's nothing really groundbreaking, but not all puzzle games are. They're meant to test you in ways you probably couldn't fathom. And that's exactly what PQ does. Practical intelligence quotient was cool to me, visuals were appealing, and its style was different with how it presented itself, and the testing sure provided thought-provoking questions that I needed answering. I will say that I think the questions could be out of balance, but that may be me not knowing how to do simple ones that have easy answers. Music is odd, and it's missing the feature of creating your own puzzles to which its sequel rectifies. But on its own, it still can be an enjoyable brain teaser for any PSP owner. Any of y'all remember those old commercials where some guy whispers the acronym? PSP. Those were the good times. To conclude, I give this game a play rate of... Gotta play. But that's only my opinion. If you have your own thoughts, leave a comment. If you like what you see, leave a like. If you think others would enjoy this, share it around the web. And if you want to see more, subscribe! Anyway, this has been Brian the Blue Game Reviews, PQ, for the PSP. Brian here, want to quickly say thanks for watching this game review, as this and other content wouldn't be possible without you. I appreciate anyone and everyone who watches my videos from all across the world, but it alarms me that over 80% of viewers aren't subscribed to the channel. So I'd like to reiterate and ask you to subscribe as well as ringing the bell to stay notified. That way you can stay up to date with future content that'll appear on the Jacobians channel. Presently I put out new quick views and current calamities every month and my brother Alex has a brand new show all about wrestling games called WrestleBound. You might want to stick around as we're only getting started. You can also find me on a couple of other channels. I run the Starfighters Arcade channel where we take a look at the history of our machines on the floor as well as show you our new arrivals and on Millennial X where me, arcade buddies, and family get into shenanigans playing, hunting, and reviewing games. If you want to explore more content, these would be the first places to go. That's all the time I got, but be sure to click the icon now if you want to watch the previous or upcoming episodes of Game Reviews. Stairs, my mortal enemy.